Hello and welcome. I really suggest you don't skip this video because I think it could be useful for a lot of people. So uh, I was exploring options how to send emails from uh, Cloudflare workers and uh, initially I was thinking to use something like Mailgun or any other provider. Um, that should be pretty easy to use but I think I found something uh, more interesting. Uh, the best part is that it's completely free. So we're going to look into integrating Cloudflare workers with a service called uh, Mail Channels. And uh, I just discovered that by reading uh, this blog post uh, from 2022. And uh, basically uh, that point where I announced the uh, integration of Cloudflare workers with Mail Channels. Uh, Mail Channels is um, a provider uh, to send emails. And um, it is completely free. Uh, so you don't have to pay for sending emails and uh, also mail channels uh, doing some filtering uh, before sending emails so it will reduce the amount of uh, spam that you can potentially send if uh, you allow users to send user generated uh, emails so i'll show you basics how to add um um, sending emails with mail channels and after that I'll show you my example and talk through all caveats I encountered during the setup uh, and at the end we'll have a working application that could send email to basically any uh, address. So as you can see uh, the um, uh, basics are really simple so this is entry point for our um, handler uh, for the cloud worker and then we just create a send request and we need to um, execute that request so let's go to the editor and let's see it here so here we have a fetch and then this is api that you're going to use api.mailchannels and the method is post uh, content type is json and then in the body we sending the body of the email uh, and after that, we just want to return the response text. Um, I recommend you doing that, at least when you do debugging, because sometimes if you have wrong configuration, this text could actually uh, contain some useful information, uh, like you're missing some part of the configuration. And uh, But eventually, when this is successful, you'll just have like a null here um, with successful response type. Uh, st status. So the body is a bit more interesting. Uh, we have uh, personalizations where we can specify uh, the recipient who will receive the email. So we have the email and the name. Uh, ignore this for now. Uh, and from you specify where you're sending it from. And important thing here is that if we want that eventually working, you want to use your own domain that you own because you're going to update some DNS records for your domain. And this is one of the mains that I have, uh, like a habit tracker application. Um, check it out, uh, but it's still in beta. So yeah, uh, moving on, uh, we have subject, like a title of the email, and then just the content for, for this case, simple text with with this message so if you do just that and try to send it uh, it won't work because it's actually never mentioned here in this blog post but uh, later they introduced a requirement that uh, the domain should be domain lockdown and that basically means we need to add a um, uh, DNS record to our domain and you can go through this link uh, I'll try to leave uh, all these links in the description uh, and read through all of that but if you're using that in um, Cloudflare workers uh, you just want to add this line and this uh, CFID I believe it stands for Cloudflare ID uh, if you want to lock down sending emails to a specific Cloudflare worker account you want to use your own ID here. And it's it's actually printed sometimes in the error message. But the other way to find that is also described here. So you just go to work and, uh, workers and pages overview. And 
here we are at that page, like the uh, home page for our uh, Cloudflare workers. And then here in the subdomain, uh, this thing in subdomain will be your SF uh, ID. So having that, uh, you want to create a record and uh, the a record key will be just this underscore mail channels and uh, the value of that will be just this string so let's create a node here so first uh, text will be uh, this will be the value the key is this thing for my case, this was habitra.com. So that, that's the first thing. And after that, uh, without these three things, uh, you can try to send an email and that could work um, in some email providers. So I tried that and in one of my uh, email addresses, it ended up in a spam folder straight away, but I was able to at least receive it when I tried to send email to my Google Gmail account, I wasn't able to receive that at all. And I've started reading why, and I found the guide from Google about email senders. And there are some changes starting in uh, this year. And it basically says that we should follow these guidelines if we want to send emails to Gmail personal accounts. And a um, couple important things is this requirements to all senders. Um, my app won't send 5,000 messages per day for sure, uh, no time soon. But even here we have a couple uh, requirements. And most important thing is this. We need to set uh, this DKIM email authentication for sending domains. Uh, don't worry if you don't understand what's that. I first encountered that a couple of days ago and had to learn what's that all about. I still don't have a deep understanding, but it's not hard to set up, so don't worry about that. We'll do that in a second. And um, also, if we scroll a bit here for uh, for this thing, it says that we, uh, if we send personal accounts, we need uh, this key to be at least um, 1,024 bits long. Uh, but we're going to generate anyway this recommended 2048 uh, bit key. To do that, uh, mail channels have a how to page, adding a DKIM signature, and it will uh, generate some certs for us that we can use in our, inside our uh, worker. So you can scroll all, all that, and this is the main part, creating a DKIM private and public key. So if you just grab this uh, line, which basically use OpenSSL, so you need OpenSSL on in your terminal. I created um, make um, CD uh, generate certs, like a subfolder to demonstrate that. And if I just do this, um, I'll now have two files, a private key PAM and private key text. Uh, and after that, we also can use this command to generate our DNS record for us. So we just do this. Okay, so now if we go to uh, uh, our editor and see what's generated. So here we just have a private key in PAM format. Then this text is, um, as you can see here, is base, base 64 uh, of that. Uh, certificate and this base 64 is what we expect to put in our DNS record um, so actually it also simplifies life for us because it generates basically the content of our uh, DNS record for DKIM so you just go to this pub key record and if we go right here, let's say we want new text uh, and this will be our value, right? And uh, as you can see, it's just like P equals and then 
base64 uh, string of our certificate and the name uh, for that thing is um, mail channels dot domain key like this so this will be our key uh, name of the record and this is the value and after that we need to add this thing um, dmark and I promise that's the last thing we need uh, so here we go so key will be this and value you literally can just copy it from from this example you don't have to change that so these mail channels is what called uh, D -keem, uh selector so we want to use uh, mail channels when we provide this uh, information here so now uh, instead of just having these two we need to add three things so my domain is uh, habitra.com uh, the Kim selector is mail channels um, because we send it, set it here to mail channels and then uh, private key is uh, the base64 uh, encoded private key that we just seen so how I've done that I've just went to uh, Cloudflare dashboard to my um, Cloudflare worker and then just added a secret there as an env and after that to access that you just want to define it here in environment private key dkim private key use the same name in your Cloudflare worker and uh, it will be available here like this so in that case we don't have to hard code our uh, private information anywhere and after that that all should work and I'll demonstrate it in a second. Uh, the only um, other caveat that I want to mention, and I spent maybe 30 minutes on that, and it was a bit stupid, but when I was testing this, uh, when it started working, I was always receiving uh, two emails instead of one. And I was sure this code is correct, and it was working fine, and my um, Cloudflare worker was just uh, triggered once. Uh, but I completely forgot that I was using my browser to trigger the request to this Cloudflare worker and browser by default generates like a favicon icon request so on each call it was generating two events uh, two calls to Cloudflare worker and that's why I had duplicated emails uh, as a quick fix here in this example I just expect this call to be a post method and if anything else I just return uh, invalid and after that we can actually test that and I have uh, the command uh, prepared so it's like a post request to just my uh, worker and if I do this and go to my email account right here and refresh it we now see a new email and um, probably can demonstrate it in real time Here we go, we have two emails from our worker, which is great. So yeah, you can definitely use Mailgun or any other provider, but Mail Channels seems to be a legit option uh, if you want to send some emails from for your application from Cloudflare workers. Uh, check it out and uh, yeah, I'll leave all the links that I found in description. Hope you enjoyed uh, the video and found it useful. If so, leave comments, likes, and please subscribe. And also, there is also always an option to support my channel on Buy Me A Coffee. Uh, see you next video. Bye-bye.